Now, a lot of guys talking about the deregulated sexual marketplace talk about the 80-20 rule, okay, the, the Pareto distribution, right, which is 80% of the women want the top 20% of the men. And, and presumably the bottom 80% of the men, they get nothing, right? Now, this is true. Now, why is it true? That's the interesting question. Why is it that at this time, 80% of the women, or in fact, it's not 80%, it's 100% of the women, they only want the top 20% of the men. Why? Well, it's simplicity itself, if you think about it, see? What's the deregulated sexual marketplace? The deregulated sexual marketplace is the sexual free-for-all that we are living with today, whereby anybody can have sex with anybody else and any number of people, so long as three conditions are met. Number one, that they both, or all participants, fancy one another, want to have sex with one another. Number two, all the participants, be it two, three, 20, they are all on the same side of the age of consent, okay? Adults with adults under the age of consent with other under the age of consent, right? And, and never crossing over that line, right? And the third condition is that there is consent to the sexual activity at the time that it occurs and into the future. Now, that's a tricky condition, but it's not the point of this video right now. I want to talk about the 80-20 rule and why is it true? It's true because of the following. See, uh, think of it in these terms. Uh, say you're a woman, right? And what kind of guy do you want? You want a guy who's like average or above average in whatever quality is important to you. Yeah, I mean, say, you know, just uh, for the sake of, uh, you know, of argument, that what's really important to you is brains. You, you want a smart guy because you figure, as a woman, you figure that, yeah, if I hook up and marry a smart guy, you know, a, a guy of above average intelligence, he will do very well and he will be able to earn the money to provide for me materially and provide for myself materially and the children that we might have, right? And that's what's going on. Now, see, if, you know, being smart is important to you as a woman, you're going to want a guy who's above average, right? Or maybe average, but, you, you, you know, it's important to you. So you don't want just average. You want somebody who's smart, smart, not just, you know, run of the mill. So you're going to want somebody who's maybe one standard deviation above the norm. Hell, maybe even two standard deviations above the norm, right? I mean, you know, one standard deviation of the, above the norm is uh, roughly 66% 60, of the population, the top 66 percentile or higher, or 68 percentile, sorry, 68 percent. That's one standard deviation on a normal distribution curve. And uh, two standard deviations, well, you're up to the guys who are the top 95 percent of the total population, right? And see, suppose you start looking at this in every important metric. I mean, like looks, personality, uh, money-making ability, brains, whatever. I mean, whatever quality you care to name, right? A woman is going to be interested in that quality insofar as the guy is concerned. And she is going to want a guy who is, at worst, average in that particular quality. And more likely than not, she's going to want a guy who's like one standard deviation above the norm, or two standard deviations above the norm. That would be reasonable, right? I bet you can see where this is going, right? See, if all women want a guy who is at worst average and is at best two standard deviations above the norm, well, then what happens with the guy who's average or below in any of these qualities? Huh? Oh, let, let's, let's start looking at it even a, a little bit with a, with, with a little bit of a finer microscope, a finer lens, right? Let's just say that a woman, any woman, the, all the 100% of women, see, say half of them want a guy who's average. And say a third of them want a guy who's one standard deviation above the norm. And say, you know, the, the remaining, what, the remaining sixth of the women want a guy who's two standard deviations above the norm, right? And let's just say, for the sake of argument, to make it easy, that the average will call it zero, uh, one standard deviation will call it one, and two standard deviations will call it two. And so, you know, 50% of the women want the average, 
uh, what is the third? 33% want the one, and 16% uh, roughly want two. And so you start averaging that out, and what does it come to? Uh, uh, three, uh, wait, 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 two, three, three divided by six, uh, 50%, 50%. Yeah. The average woman wants a guy who's 50% above the average. 50% of a standard deviation above the average. Okay? Half a standard deviation above the average. How much is that, roughly? Half a standard deviation is, uh, if a, standard, a full standard deviation is, what was it? 68%? Um, no, no, 34%. So 34% is a full standard deviation. And so half of, uh, half of that, it's not going to be 17%. Of course, it's going to be more. It's going to be something like 22, 25%. So yeah, about 75% of women. Okay, let me rephrase that. Uh, uh, most women will want a guy who's in the top 75 percentile. That's what they're going to want. Sorry for being lousy at doing math on the fly like this, but you get my point, see? Just from this, you know, back of the envelope bullshit here, me talking to you about it, right? We can see quite evidently that women are going to want, all women, all 100% of women, are only gonna focus on the guys who are in the 75th percentile or above. They're not gonna pay any attention to anybody below that because they're always going to want a guy who is above average. Now see, this didn't matter in the past. No, it didn't matter in the past. And do you know why it didn't matter in the past? Because in the past, I'm talking, you know, uh, barely 50 years ago and earlier, earlier throughout human history, I'm talking 50 years ago and into the distant past of 100,000 years ago and earlier, right? It did not matter because the universe of men that any woman would meet was very small. Think about it. Think about it. See, say back in 1950, right? 1950, uh, a woman is living in some small town, right? She's living in some small town or, or maybe a medium-sized city. Let's just, for the sake of art, she's, she's living in some medium-sized city. She's some 18-year-old girl. She just finished high school, right? She has some secretarial job, say, in like Cincinnati right? And uh, she, she meets the people at work and the people at her church and she goes home and her family's social circle, right? And her mother is saying, well, you should get married, dear, right? And she's living at home with her mother. And uh, there's a lot of control as to what kind of guy is suitable for her, right? And there is a fairly reduced number of men. And so in that reduced number of men that she meets, old friends from high school, the people that she meets at her work, at her church meetings and what have you, that fairly reduced set of circumstances, of, of, of potential mates rather, she's gonna find somebody who is above average, but above average in that very reduced state, set rather, yeah? And so she'll find somebody. And that was the case before as well. I mean, you can change the accoutrements and the city and the location and all the rest of it, but that is basically what happened to most women in the past. But that's not happening today because today, with the technology that we have today, with the ability to meet people on the other side of the globe because of communications technology, right? The men that a woman can aspire to are everywhere, online dating. 40% of couples today met through online dating, and that uh, figure is skyrocketing, okay? People meet online. They meet online, and that's how their universe is insofar as their possible mates. It's everybody that they meet online, which is a potentially infinite number of people, or practically infinite number of people, right? And so because of that, because they have no limits to the number of people, they're always going to go, women are always going to aim for the top 75 percentile or higher because they can meet them. Because the communications technology that we have today, internet, which allows all these online dating sites, allows women to meet these guys, these top, you know, uh, 75 percentiles or higher, right? I mean, we, we've just shown, you know, just in my, in my very casual approach to it on this video, how it is that all women are after the top 75, 80% of men, right? And since they have the ability to find these men globally with an infinite supply, practically infinite supply, right? 
the guy who's 74% or lower, mm -hmm. the guy who's just fucking average, he's got no shot. He's got no shot because he's average. He's got no shot because he's below half a standard deviation from the norm. Yeah, th th that's what's going on. See, and this will continue. This isn't going to get fixed anytime soon. Okay. Uh, anybody who thinks that this uh, state of affairs is uh, transitory or that it'll work itself out somehow, they're fucking lying to themselves. They, they are not looking at reality. This reality is not going to change. The communications technology, you know, it, it's a genie that cannot be put back into the bottle. It's toothpaste that you can't put back into the tube. See, women have the ability to meet the top 25% of the guys. Mm -hmm. And so they do. And so they ignore the bottom 74%. Now, notice what I'm saying, by the way. I'm not saying that all 100% of women will automatically want to fuck everyone, every guy who's in the top 20, 25% of the population. No, that's not the case. I mean, two people can potentially meet and they just don't like each other, okay? I and mean, you, you uh, can meet some uh, supermodel, right? and find her to be, just be a horrible person. And yeah, she's hot, but you don't want to be with her. And that's that and move on, right? No, I'm not saying that all of the women want to be with all the men and will do whatever it takes. No, no, no. But what I am saying is that they are going to discount the bottom 80% of men. They will because they can, because the current environment allows them to discount them. They don't have to pay attention to them or even look at them. Now, why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because of that little guy on the other day, the, the little five foot nothing guy who had a, like a freak out at that bagel shop, right? Oh man, I saw that man and I felt so, so sorry for the guy. So, so sorry for that man. I mean, just hearing the anger in his voice and, and when he, he pointed up to that taller man, that man who was just average height, you know, five foot nine is the average in the United States, right? He was pointing up at that guy, you're not God or my boss or my father, right? Oh God, I, it, it, it just, it just I, I wanted to die, yeah? Because what he was saying, the, the things that he was saying, the, the, the rant that he was having of how women online don't pay attention to a man because he's five feet, well, it's true because he's below average. And that happens to all men, not just guys who are short, but guys who are not that smart, guys who don't make that much money, guys who are not that handsome, guys who are just not that uh, socially adept. The guys who are below the, that 80 percentile, yeah, in whatever category, they're going to get nothing. They're going to get nothing unless they take heroic measures. Yeah, unless they take heroic measures to get over this bad deal that they got. Because it, it's, it, it's fate that is cruel and it's a fate that isn't going to change. Now, I mentioned the deregulated sexual marketplace at the beginning of this video, right? Or earlier in this video. And uh, why did I bring it up? You see? see, because there, there's a key component here. Back in the past, now I was ta talking about that girl who was like maybe a secretary back in the 1950s in Cincinnati, right? And he, she had her parents and her church group sort of like pressuring her to find a nice guy and settle down and what have you, right? Well, see, back at that time in the 1950s in the regulated sexual marketplace where there were other participants, principally a girl's mother, a girl's extended family, and a, a girl's social group, that was pressuring her into settling down and finding a right guy, the right guy, a decent guy, a hardworking guy, they would push her towards a guy that they considered appropriate to her, for her rather, a guy they considered appropriate for her that she might not necessarily have liked at the time. And, and this is a key issue. You see, a lot of times an adult, a person in their 40s, 50s, 60s, will recognize that a young person is much more suitable for their daughter or their granddaughter or their niece or whatever than the woman herself. See, in a regulated sexual uh, marketplace, the extended family and the parents have a huge say in the mating choices of a girl. 
And you see a lot of times an 18 year old girl, a 25 year old girl, a 30 year old woman even, might not be the best person to make the choice of a mate for herself. Because you see, when you're young, a lot of times you don't know who you really are. When you're young, a lot of times you're just floundering around and you need help. Yeah. And you know that this is true. I mean, how many times have you looked back at yourself when you were a little bit older and recognize how foolish the things you had done when you were young. How many times have you heard of people who got married in their 20s and quickly divorced by the time they were 32 and they claimed that they were unsuited for one another, even though everybody who knew them could have told them that in an instant, in an instant, that they were unsuited for one another, right? It's because in the regulated sexual marketplace of the past, the people around a woman and around a man as well would push them towards a suitable mate, a long-term suitable mate, whom at the time they might not have fancied that much, but who the people around them, their parents and aunts and uncles and grandparents and what have you, would have realized is a good match for them. A good match for them who would have made a good couple for the woman, a good provider, a good husband, a good father, right? And, and, and this was actually a good thing for women because it prevented them from making bad choices. This regulated sexual marketplace pushing a woman and a man into marriage, into a long lasting relationship with somebody, even sometimes in spite of what they wanted or in spite of not really liking the person that much. Well, it was beneficial to them. But in this deregulated sexual marketplace, where all that matters is whether you fancy somebody, if you're both on the same side of the age of consent, and uh, you know, if, if there is consent at the time of the sexual encounter and into the future, well, because of this, see, people are getting into relationships, sexual relationships, romantic relationships, marriages, with people that they fancy at the moment but are just not suitable for them long term, see? Because all they're focusing on is the quality that they think is most important to them, be it looks, be it charisma, be it uh, height, be it money, whatever stupid, foolish quality, yeah? And this is a disaster, not just for women, who wind up hooking up with the wrong guy. But also for men, because what happens is that you have 80% of the men who get nothing. Why do they get nothing? Well, look at the little guy, the little uh, five foot nothing guy who had his rant at the bagel shop, see? He can't change how tall he is, yeah? He can't, there's nothing to be done about it, yeah? And somebody who is just average or slightly above average in intelligence, you know, he can't make himself smarter, yeah? And a guy who's this average looks, he can't make himself be more handsome unless he does like heroic uh, plastic surgery or some shit like that. You know, and, and the guy who's not socially that adept, yeah, will he be able to do something? Again, not without heroic measures, see? And so what happens is that 80% of the guys, 80% of the men in the normal distribution curve are automatically at a huge disadvantage in the contemporary dating scene. And all the 100% of the women are gonna go for the top 20% of the men for the reasons I explained, because they're always gonna want somebody who's above average. And since there is nobody to control these women, there's nobody to tell them, this guy is not right for you. I know you, and you're not gonna be happy with this guy. This guy is, yeah, he's a handsome guy. He's above average in looks. Maybe he's one standard deviation above the norm in looks or two standard deviations above the norm in looks, but he's an asshole and he's gonna make your life miserable. He's gonna fuck you and dump you and break your heart. Don't go for him. That's what an extended family member would tell a girl, right? But there's nobody around to tell that to women nowadays and so they throw themselves at these guys who treat them like dirt who make them miserable, who break their hearts, right? And on top of that, you know, the top 25, 20, 25% of the men, they, by definition, they cannot wind up with all the other 100% of the women, 
right? Apart from it being grossly unfair, you know, in the Western democracies, we don't put up with polygamy, right? So, you know, it's not going to happen, but nobody is around to tell the women. And so because of it, because there is no sexual market regulation, because there are no people with the self-confidence, the moral self-confidence to tell young women that what they are doing is foolish, right? You have all these heartbroken and bitter women who are used up like snot rags, like cum rags, if you want to be honest about it and brutally vulgar about it. They are used like cum rags and discarded, yeah? As they chase after this top 20, 25% of the men, yeah? And the bottom 75, 80% of the men, the average men, the decent men, the hardworking men, the kind men, yeah? They get nothing and they get embittered. They get embittered and angry and unhappy, yeah? And the women get embittered and angry and unhappy. Hmm? Everybody loses. The only people who win, the only ones, are the guys at the top. The good-looking guys, the rich guys, the smart guys, the, the guys who are, you know, five feet ten and taller, the guys who've got, you know, 105 IQ points or above, you know, the guys who, you know, earn uh, 60 grand a year or more. The top guys, they get all the women. They get their pick of the women. And all the women, they get used like, like cum rags. And some of them, if they're lucky, if they're very, very attractive, they might wind up with a ring. But most, they wind up bitter and settling for some guy that they don't really care for, you know? Some beta who's the best she can do. And the men, they're all frustrated. The, the guy at the bagel shop, he's the poster boy. It's horrible. I mean, the, 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 the guy in the bagel shop, man, he really... Because he is the 80%. He is the sexually disenfranchised 80%. And from what I understand, the guy makes a good living. Uh, he's not totally stupid. I mean, from the rant alone, you could tell that he had a lot of rage, the poor bastard. But he was not a stupid man. Yeah, He was not stupid. He, he understood what was going on. He, he understood what the disaster his life was. right? And he was lashing out because of it. And that is the 80% of men. And this system is grossly unfair. But the tragedy is that it will not change. We're going to be living in this environment forever, okay? Or at least our lifetimes and the lifetimes of our grandchildren. So the smart thing is to prepare yourself and figure out a way to beat the system. Beat this incredibly unfair system that we have. My recommendation is game. It seems to me that game is the only way that an average guy or a below average guy can hope to score a woman in this deregulated sexual marketplace. It's the only way. You want to get a quality woman, you don't want to get some fucking slut. You want to get somebody with a, you know, a neuron or two in her head, right? Somebody who wants to have children perhaps, got to learn game. That's the only way, because what ultimately game is, it's a way to make yourself socially more adept, raising your level. If you're an average in so far as social adeptness, which is the ability to get women, right? Game will raise you from, say, 50% or 40%, raise you up to the top 80%, enough that you can snag a girl, right? Mm, that's the best solution because this situation grossly unfair that it is, is not going to change. Why isn't it going to change? Because nobody knows how to change it. Nobody knows how to change it. And nobody has even like, you know, articulated the problem as I'm telling you now here. Yeah? They haven't articulated the problem of what's going on. And so they have no solution for it. Yeah? And any solution would require the re-regulation of the sexual marketplace. And the fact of the matter is, too many people are enjoying themselves at this time. And too many people are just going along with the current regime. Too many people don't have the willpower to say, no, this system doesn't work. Yeah? But because of this, you know, it's going to continue. 
even as everybody is so dreadfully unhappy. Because they are. Men and women are so dreadfully unhappy in the Western democracies because of sexual failure, romantic failure. Yeah. And it's built in. See? The sexual liberation of the 60s was not a sexual liberation. What it was, was it rearranged the sexual marketplace. So only the top men had it good. And everybody else, both men and women, everyone else got fucked.